Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to report the results of my annual survey of Oxford businesses, and I thank everyone who participated in the survey and shared their concerns. We recognize that businesses are facing growing challenges. In fact, this year I received a record number of responses, double of last year. The cost of doing business in Oxford tops the list of concerns once again. From the increasing cost of hydro and small business taxes to the rising cost due to Bill 148, Oxford businesses are feeling squeezed by the government as they try to operate with rising costs on all fronts. Because of these increased costs, local businesses report having to reduce staff hours or, in some cases, lay off staff. 58 per cent of the respondents shared that they were forced to raise prices and increase their hours as the owner or operator simply to make ends meet. In response to local job losses, last year I launched the Shop Local, Buy Local campaign. This builds on existing efforts to support small businesses and create jobs by encouraging the residents of Oxford County to shop local. I want to encourage everyone to support our local businesses whenever they can. Again, I want to thank all the business operators who took time to tell me about their business and share the challenges they are facing. We recognize how hard they work, and I hope the government hears their concerns so we can work to create a successful business climate and keep jobs in Ontario. Thank you, thank you very much. Davids, the member from Timmins, James Bay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Earlier today, the government forced a vote on a bill that had a poison pill in it, and you Democrats voted in favour of it because obviously we're in favour of police oversight. We need to make sure that police services are in such a way that people can have confidence in. Of course, we agree with the First Nations component of the bill. But there's segments in that bill in regards to privatization that, quite frankly, are a step in a complete wrong direction. And we're here to say that forming the next government, we will remove all sections of Bill 175 that have to do with privatization that have been enacted in this particular bill. We, as New Democrats, stand firmly on the side of making sure that public services are delivered by public agencies and that never should police services be contracted out to private contractors and that policing be done by those men and women who are trained, who put their lives on the line and who are there for people when it comes to the emergencies that they face. But of course, as New Democrats, we understand we need to move on the issues that allow us to be able to provide more oversight uh, to our racialized communities when it comes to policing. Of course, we support that. And when it comes to what we need to do and should have done years ago on the First Nations file, when it comes to policing is something that we can support. But again, rest assured, we will repeal every section of Bill 175 that does anything to privatize police services in this province. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Beaches, East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And as the proud representative of many Bangladeshi and Bangladeshi Canadians, I want to take this opportunity to recognize Bangladeshi Heritage Month in the province of Ontario. This was a bill that was brought by my colleague, the member from Scarborough Southwest, last year, and we adopted it. This is the first month we're able to officially celebrate. Ontario is home to a large and vibrant Bangladeshi community, many of whom have made significant contributions to the province's scientific, cultural and political development. In my community, the Bangladeshi organizations offer programs on elder abuse, prevention, social integration for new immigrants and computer skills for seniors. And Bangladeshi youth lead an initiative that prevents reduces smoking in the community, and they host a two-day soccer tournament. Bangladeshis form a large part of the fabric of Beaches East York, and the month of March is an important for the community, with March 26 being recognized as their Independence Day, and the day memorialized the deaths of thousands of innocents who died in the Liberation War that resulted in their independence in 1971. And we'll be raising the Bengali flag here at Queen's Park on March 26. Shortly after Independence Day is on April 14th is the Bengali New Year, when a number of events and parades take place in my riding. Speaker, in recognizing Bangladeshi Heritage Month, we honor the many significant contributions of the community. Canada was one of the first countries to recognize Bangladesh after it declared independence, and from that day on, our relation with Bangladesh has been founded upon shared values of democracy and freedom. On the New Year, Speaker, I wish you all the members a Shubo Noble Borshal. Happy New Year. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to remind residents of Perry Sound, Muskoka, and all Ontarians of some of the great activities available in Perry Sound, Muskoka this March break. 
We have alpine skiing at Hidden Valley Highlands Ski Area. As of today, Hidden Valley has 12 of their 14 runs mm -hmm. open. And of course, uh, Hidden Valley is also where Dara Howell, Olympic gold medalist, learned to ski. Wow. Arrowhead Provincial Park, north of Huntsville, has uh, cross-country ski trails, snowshoe trails, and a 1.3-kilometer ice skating trail. Many of the ski trails and the skating trail are still open. <coughs> and Georgia Nordic Ski Club on Highway 124 north of Perry Sound also offers cross-country skiing and many other trails that are still open. Now, if you love maple syrup, Mr. Speaker, why not go see how it is made by visiting Muskoka Maple Trail? Visit muskokamaple.ca to learn about the more than 30 maple experiences from sugar bush tours to pancake breakfast. Uh, Johnson's Cranberry Marsh near Bala also has a skating trail and pond hockey rinks as well as wagon rides and every Friday night they offer night skating on a trail lit with tiki torches followed by mulled wine by the campfire. And if you're a hockey fan, of course, you shouldn't miss the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame in Perry South. For those looking for more indoor activities, we have great shopping, wonderful restaurants in our community, so remember to shop local, buy local. I wish everyone a safe and uh, March break. Thank you. Yes, commercial. Thank you. Further member statements, member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to talk about something that's happened in Niagara and the Lake. Earlier this week, the council held another meeting where hundreds of residents came to voice their opposition to Ranwood Resort Developments as it stands today. The residents are opposed to this because they don't want to see their historic properties compromised to make way for six-story buildings that are going to change the landscape of the commons, and I stand with them. Mr. Speaker, this isn't the first meeting. The last meeting which I personally attended about, about this development, 700 residents came out in opposition to the Ramroo Resort Development Plan as they stand today. Any time we look at development, we need to be consulting the residents. That he must be listened to. Mr. Speaker, when you build a community, you build a special bond between neighbours and community that requires work to, working together, ensuring that community, that their children and grandchildren inherit just a special place that we're living in. We have something special in Niagara on the Lake, something that has required hard work and dedication. We simply cannot afford to lose that. Too much damage has already been done. The chainsaws have already come out, and we lost far too many of our trees that are on this property. Everything here needs to be put on hold until a new plan that includes a resident's vision for their town is created. We can do better, and we must do better. The only way we can keep Niagara and Lake beautiful and preserve it for generations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Appreciate the time. Further member statements, the member from Etobicoke North. Thank you, Speaker. Etobicoke North. First of all, happy 40th anniversary to the Rexdale Women's Centre. I congratulate the community on the brand spanking new $15 million public library on Albion Road. I want to let uh, my colleagues know that almost 10,000 children have benefited in my riding from OHIP Plus, the new uh, PharmaCare uh, program in which we have free medications for folks under 25 years old. We have a $2 billion Finch LRT light rail transit development underway with eight stops, count them, Speaker, eight stops custom designed for Etobicoke North from Humber College, Highway 27, Westmore, Martin Grove, Albion, Stevenson, uh, Kipling, and Islington. We have now as well a $400 million expansion, more than doubling the footprint of Etobicoke General Hospital, part of the William Osler system, which will have new emergency department, neurodiagnostics, respirology, cardiology, and a whole host of other developments. I want to let you know, Speaker, that thousands of students as well have benefited from the free two-year, four-year uh, for uh, college tuition at Humber College, and they're also enjoying their $90 million new student center. And I want to say, Speaker, that this is just uh, part of the developments going on at Etobicoke North. I also want to take a moment to congratulate the frontline healthcare workers, Speaker, in the province of Ontario, who were able to take system-wide rot and render a clean bill of health within a matter of weeks. So I want to congratulate the healthcare system of Ontario. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, sadly, Marcel Burnell, the former mayor of Whitby, recently passed away. Marcel was a true community champion, Speaker, who served the town of Whitby as an elected official for 24 years, including nine as mayor. Marcel was a friend, colleague, and mentor to me when I joined town council in 2003. He lived large, Speaker, and always made the tough decisions, of which there were many in his tenure as mayor. 
During his time, Marcel was instrumental to the development of the landmark cinema entertainment complex, the renovation and expansion of the Centennial Building, the development of the McKinney Recreational Centre, and the creation of the award-winning Whippy Central Library Speaker, which opened in 2005. Speaker Marcel Burnell need not be enlarged in death beyond what he was in life. To be remembered as a good and decent man who cared deeply for the town of Whitby and its residents and who worked hard every day to improve their lives, that speaker is Marcel Burnell's well-deserved legacy. Further member statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Speaker, on the evening of Friday, March the 2nd, a major fire started in a nearly completed condo building still under construction on Rutledge Road in Streetsville near Tannery Street. The fire raged all evening long and into Saturday morning before being brought under control and put out by the Mississauga Fire and Emergency Service. The new building was completely destroyed. There were, however, no lives lost and no injuries due to the fire. The seniors' residence across the street was safely evacuated, with its residents being looked after within the community during the evening and into the next day. No nearby homes were damaged by the fire. Our first responders, Mississauga firefighters and the Peel Regional Police, managed the situation with care and with compassion. I saw Mississauga Fire Chief Tim Beckett on the scene the morning after the fire. He'd been there all night long and made sure everybody knew what was happening and why. Power was restored to affected nearby homes by early afternoon the day after the fire. Most of the nearby residents evacuated had returned to their homes within 15 to 18 hours. The fire marshal continues to investigate the cause of the blaze. Many thanks to our Mississauga firefighters and to the Peel Regional Police for their handling of the incident. Thank you, Speaker. Okay. Further member statement, the member from Niagara West Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When driving down the QEW, the iconic uh, towers of, of the steel mills in Hamilton have defined that community for decades and decades. And earlier today, we heard the member from Sault Ste. Marie uh, speak about concerns that he brought forward with regards to this government's approach to uh, protecting our steel industry here in the province of Ontario. Uh, we heard earlier this week as well that the, uh, the type of tariffs the United States is looking at imposing on imports of steel, uh, including Canadian steel, will have an enormous detrimental impact on our communities, families and workers in Hamilton uh, and in Ontario as well as elsewhere across the province. Hamilton's steel industry and business community are concerned with the 25% tariff on steel exported to the United States. In fact, Chamber of Commerce President Keenan Loomis said this is the worst case scenario for Hamilton. We didn't expect this. Ultimately, there are up to about, I think, 40,000 jobs or so that could be impacted in Hamilton by the statement, said Loomis. So I stand today on behalf of the many workers and families in Niagara West Glanbrook who depend on our steel industry for good, stable, well paying jobs and ask that this Liberal government take substantial action to defend and protect our steel industry here in the province of Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their comments and their statements. It's